Thanks for being with me. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to be here in my own home. In your own home from quarantine. You look beautiful. You Um, do. Thanks, baby. So for everyone watching, this is Amy Carrero. She plays Adora and She-Ra on She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. I have been lucky enough to have her as a co-star for now the past five seasons. We have been recording this show for almost four years. Yeah. Since booking it. God, it's almost been four years. Which is insane. And we've just put out season five on Netflix, which was the final season. Um, We're really, really proud of this show. And today we have a special treat. We are going to read some scenes from the finale titled Heart Part Two. Um, And we're going to take us to page 15. I have my script here, which was actually signed by Noel and the cast. Oh, look at that little drawing. The catcher drawing. Isn't that cute? That's so cute. I know. Do you even remember our last record? I only, yes. I don't think, did we record that together? I feel like we we did a, a scene together because they were like, we need to have this moment where the girls are in the booth together. That's right. Right? Um, but that was the day we had the champagne. Yeah, yeah. The champagne, the the, the celebratory season we had finale. We celebratory champagne out of coffee mugs at like 11.30 in the morning. And I remember going home and being like, well, I'm done for the day. That's yeah, that's it. it. That's yeah. I just completed a show and I don't care. I'm going to drink right now. Exactly. It was a big moment for us. Um, okay, so I chose this scene because, well, you know why. For obvious reasons. Um, we are, are, are you ready? Yeah, okay, I got cool. my, I, I have, I'm getting that, what you have, it, just the first, the first page and then the, the page where it says the I love you framed. Oh, perfect. So That's I'm precious. Gonna and you're going to have them side by side? Amy, I'm going to do the same thing in my house so they match. Yay! Okay, let's No, I'll, do it. I'll definitely do that. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, okay. okay, page 15. I'm we gonna are at- read, I'm going to read off camera, off camera oh. direction. That's I'm Allie. Just, it's my hand. She's going to read the, the cues and any characters that aren't Adora and Catra. Mm-hmm. Allie's like the most overqualified person to be reading stage oh, directions. Oh, please. <laughs> that's very nice. Overqualified. Thank you for doing it. Thank you. You guys are the real professionals, so I just, I learn from the greats. Allie's just gotten into the VO world. It's and fun. She, and she's been learning from me, which is hilarious, because right. I'm yeah. still learning from many just, people. Just auditions, but I, but it's fun. It's cool. It's hard to, break. sorry, I know I'm like belaboring the point, but it is hard to break in. It, but once you do. It's hard. It is. It, I, I took, it was, I think I, I was, it took me like five years to book my first voiceover audition. Whoa. Wait, when did you book the Disney princess, um, um. Yeah, I think well, like two years before Shira. Okay. But you, anyway. Wh- um, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name of the princess. Elena of Avalor. Elena of Avalor, okay. yes, thank you. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's weird because you want to say Avalon. You know what I that, mean? That's like, exactly, I, I want to say Elena of Avalon. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's yeah. not right. Not like that's Avalon? Enough. <laughs> okay, yeah, interior okay, sorry, beacon. Sorry. No, it's okay. We're in the heart of Etheria. Allie, take us away, stage director. Adora and Catra struggle forward onto the ramp that leads into the middle of the heart. The magic arcs over their heads, flickering with traces of first one script, keeping the magic restrained. Catra looks back, her eyes fill with dread as she sees that the green of Prime's virus is right behind them, creeping closer and closer to the heart. He's almost here. We need to hurry. Finally, they reach the central platform. Adora breathlessly laughs in relief, (sighs) touching the failsafe on her chest. Heart of Etheria, we made it. Adora approaches the center of the platform, concentrating hard, thrusting a hand out for the sword. Her eyebrows knit and her fingers strain as she focuses on her rage, crying out with the effort. (sighs) The sword starts to slowly take shape against her palm, but when she goes to grasp it, she yelps in pain and staggers. (sighs) The sword swiftly vanishes again. Catra catches her, propping her back up. What is it? What's wrong? I, I, I don't know. Sick with the realization, Adora looks at the spreading gashes on her body, glowing green, then back to where the veins of Prime's corruption continue to creep closer. I I can't... I can't transform. It's the elemental's venom. It's keeping me from becoming Shira. Wait, what what does that mean? Is the failsafe not going to work without her? Adora's face crumples as the weight of the situation hits her. She knows what she has to do. She gently pushes Catra aside and stands on her own. No, it'll work. The failsafe starts to glow within her. Adora trembles, then forces a smile and looks back at Catra. 
get as far away from here as you can. I have to do this next part on my own. Catra's face drops, immediately picking up that something's off. She pulls Adora back, forcing her to meet her eyes. Adora, what is going to happen to you? Adora's shoulders sag as she relents. Without Shira, the magic will destroy me. I'm sorry, Catra. I'm, I'm so sorry. But there's no more time. It has to end here. I can still save everybody. Adora forces a brave smile and clasps the back of Catra's neck with trembling hands, touching their foreheads together. It's okay. I'm ready. The fail-safe spells glows brighter. The green of Prime's virus has started to creep onto the heart's architecture. Adora tries to pull away, but Catra grabs her and holds on. No. Catra! No! I am not leaving. Whatever happens, I am staying with you. Adora looks unhappy, but there's clearly no arguing with Catra. She takes a deep breath, gripping Catra's hand to steady her, and turns towards the heart. She takes a step and then screams. <sighs> In pain, collapsing, Catra tries to catch her, but they both fall down together. Adora! Catra rolls Adora over. Adora is clawing at the failsafe on her chest. Catra's <laughs> eyes widen in horror as she sees that the green slashes on her body have spread, and on her chest the failsafe is turning green. No. No! 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 The structure groans and sparks around them as Prime's virus spreads over the heart and Adora goes limp in Catra's arms. It's too late. Okay, and scene. Woo! Scene! I got chills on that last bit. Yeah. Oh! Okay. I'm going to take us to page 20, and okay. I think we can pretty Ready? much here, go, here. like, all the way through to 23. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so uh, we'll skip the, um, I see. Yeah, so we'll skip the little <laughs> glimmer bow moment and start at scene 100. Okay. Great. Interior beacon, heart of Etheria. In the center of the heart, Prime's green light has covered everything. The magic strains against its bonds as the heart is deployed. The whole structure rumbles and shakes, flares of magic tearing free all around. Catra grips the front of Adora's jacket in both fists, shaking her desperately. Adora! Adora, stay awake! Adora's eyes are unfocused, dim. They pass over the green of Prime's virus on the architecture above in despair. I'm sorry. Her eyes flicker closed. The magic around them starts to swirl violently, breaking its restraints. Catra screams. Adora! Interior beacon, memory chamber. It all goes quiet. Adora opens her eyes. She's in a bright room, her own room in Bright Moon. Confused, she reaches out to touch the waterfall, then flinches as it glitches, revealing it to be a memory chamber illusion. She looks around, then catches sight of herself in the mirror. She's herself, but she looks older. Her hair is down, and instead of her usual uniform, she's wearing a white dress and a gold tiara. Everything is a little too bright, a little too soft, dreamlike. She jumps as the door crashes open, and Glimmer and Catra tumble into the room. They both also look older, and both are in formal clothes. Glimmer wields a hairbrush as Catra dodges her. Just let me brush it! <laughs> no! Stop! <laughs> Laughing, Catra dodges behind Adora. Don't let her touch me! She is going to torture me! Do you always have to be this dramatic? Hey, wait up! Bo runs in after them, wearing formal clothes that match Glimmer's. Come on, guys, if we're late to the Scorpia's ball, she's gonna kill us. Fine, you're off the hook this time. Glimmer throws an arm around Bo, and they head out of the room. Catra starts to follow. Then they all stop in the door and turn, smiling back at Adora. Catra holds out a hand. Are you coming? Adora's eyes shine as she reaches for Catra's hand. Then the room rumbles. The distant sounds of the heart deploying, breaking through the peaceful vision. Around her, the room starts to fall apart, dissolving into pixels as Prime's virus eats away at it. Catra's brow furrows as she stretches her hand out towards Adora. Adora tries to run as the room glitches and crumbles into darkness around her. The floor falls away beneath her feet. For a moment, she's falling. Then a hand catches her. She looks up to see Catra, normal Catra, standing in a bright white door desperately straining to hold on to Adora as she's sucked back towards the crushing darkness behind her. Come on! Adora, you have to wake up! Heart of Etheria, the beacon. Catra's last line overlaps, the cut, as she yells it at the unconscious Adora. 
More and more explosions rock the heart as the magic presses outwards, shattering the structures, keeping it pinned. The platform they're on is the last intact piece. Petra curls up against Adora's chest. We always said it would be you and me, together at the end of the world. But not yet, okay? Memory chamber. Catra's line overlaps the cut again as she calls out over the destruction. Not yet! Adora's fingers are starting to slip. She looks back as the darkness closes in around her, overwhelmed, then back at Catra, her eyes filled with tears. It's too late. I failed. Catra looks shocked at the defeat in Adora's face. Then her claws dig into Adora's forearm, stubbornly. No. No. I am not letting you go. It all comes pouring out as Catra shouts. Don't you get it? I love you. I always have. Please do not leave me again. Adora's eyes go wide with shock. Back to the beacon, heart of Etheria. Still slumped over Adora's unconscious form, Catra's eyes go wide. Realizing what she just said, boom, another blast goes off right behind them, surging towards them. Catra throws herself over Adora with a yelp, protective, embracing for the blast. But the blast doesn't come. Catra opens her eyes to see that Adora has raised an arm over her, and on her arm is the shield of protection flickering into a stable form, absorbing the flare. Adora raises her head. When she meets Catra's eyes, her eyes are glowing blue. Really? <laughs> Catra laughs in relief. Adora's hair is starting to float. The light in her chest starting to glow blue again as the green gashes on her body fade. <laughs> You're such an idiot. Adora grabs Catra, pulls her in, and kisses her. I love you too. The change is immediate. Adora blazes with gold and rainbow light, enveloping them both. The fair safe glows brighter and brighter, starting to drift off of Adora's body as the magic surges around them, filling the screen and blotting them from the view. End scene. Dude, that's... it's so cool to hear the stage directions with it because, I mean, I don't know. It's just cool to know. It's get a, get a glimpse into like what the writing meant. Yes, for, you know. Yes, really and we exciting. also we don't get to have table reads, so like we never hear the stage direction as actors get to speak their lines yes. in between. So to have that moment outside of us just reading the script before we go into record. Yeah. It's, it's just cool to play it back and hear it, it out loud. Cool. It's really cool. And I love how emotional you get because it makes me, like, charge up. No, I, I wonder, too, like, if we compare how our original reads compare to this one, if there's anything different. Because, you know, you just bring to it whatever you feel in the moment. I don't know. No, it's but true. Anyway. Fans can A-B I, that performance with what aired. <laughs> Yeah, somebody piece it together. But I am so lucky to have been able to go on this journey with you. And you're an ace and, and a phenomenal actress. Not that anyone has to tell you that. Um, and I just, I feel so lucky. Thank you. I feel really lucky too. I think that we were really, first of all, like plucked into something really, really special. Like I don't even yeah. think we even really knew the weight of what this show would carry for so yeah. many people, especially LGBTQ youth. Like I think this show just... It carries a huge responsibility, but I think Noel was the perfect person to kind of lead the charge in that aspect. Yes, um, but to be characters in this show and and know what it stands for and what it represents and just speak towards people that feel disenfranchised or don't get to speak out on what they believe in, this show has been able to do that for people. And it's yes. it's pretty it's pretty wild. It's really cool to be a part of something like this. Yeah, and it kind of just feels like an accident, you know, like as an actor, I'm sure you can relate, like you know, you get booked on a job and you hope that it's good and you hope that people respond, but so often they don't, you know what I mean? Like yeah. not everything is going to resonate. Not everything's going to be like a hit or whatever. Right. So it's always such a nice surprise when, when you find that like people do, it does resonate with them. And, and I, I just feel like, you know, other than bringing whatever we can to it, we just are, right, maybe I can only speak for myself. I just felt like I was dropped into this like amazing project and I'm just really lucky same same and I think the casting between like me and you and Karen and Marcus yeah. and Lauren like it's such a strong like I love our scenes together we don't really get to do that often and we didn't really get to record in the room all of us together very yeah. consistently because everyone had a different shooting schedule on their own live action stuff but to 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 know that as a cast, like, you know, we all came together during that finale and we did that, like, live Twitter feed. And it was really sweet to see us all up there on the screen, like, Brady Bunch together. Because I'm yeah, like, this is too. a gold cast. 
I was like, this I'm, is dope. And I'm sad that we're not going to get to travel together just like one more time. I mean, who knows? Like maybe, maybe somebody will want us at some convention, but um, yeah, it's just, it's really I, I would love another hurrah, a last hurrah. I would too. I would too. Yeah. Two things I will say before I let you go. Um, one, you were like one of the first people to text me when my show got canceled, which was so sweet. I mean, for people who are watching this, like we all, I think at this point now, it's not big news, but Schooled was canceled, so we won't be coming back for season three, but you were so sweet and you sent me the nicest text. And I just want to say like outside of my family of Schooled, like this was also my family for a pretty long period of time, even though we were in and out of the booth and like it's different than shooting a live action show, but I'm so lucky we got to work together. I have adored recording with you. And I hope we get to do it again because I think our voices, the way we kind of like contrast each other on screen is really special, but also yeah. like being in the booth with you and seeing how emotionally charged you get on certain scenes, it you helps too. feed my performance. I, I, I'm constantly learning from you. And I, and I think one of the great things about you is that you really kind of aren't too concerned about committing. And I know that sounds really stupid maybe to people who aren't actors, mm-hmm. but there's so many uh, people who are afraid to commit because maybe they'll look I don't know, whatever, like totally, too much or, totally, or yeah, ugly or something. God forbid for a woman to look ugly in, in uh-huh. this business. Not that you ever could, but you know what I'm saying. A lot, there is a lot of hesitation when it comes to going all the way, and I really admire your feel, fearlessness in playing Catra and any you. character you play. Thank you, Amy. Um, yeah. And then another thing I'll say, because I think it's kind of a trip for fans, and I don't think we've ever like released this information, but I originally, at this point, almost four years ago, I recorded for Adora. Like my agents were like, cool, so you're going out for Adora. It's this, yeah. you know, reboot of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. At the time I didn't know what She-Ra was, which is crazy. Yeah. I don't think a lot of us did. I mean, it was not our generation. No. But I I auditioned for Adora. Um, I did not make it far, but then they called me back and they were like, We really think you're right for Catra. Um, will you come in and read with a girl that is is pretty much, I mean, they didn't tell me this at the moment, but I think she was a lock to play Adora. It was a chemistry read, and it was not you. It was another girl. I, yeah, yeah. And I like, learned that years later, by the way. Did you really? Because we yeah, never talked yeah. about it. We didn't talk about it. I mean, you're so classy, like, you wouldn't. You know what I mean? They're, they're Except for now. Like, like, I'd be like, girl, no, I'm saying, like, the first thing I would tell you is, like, <laughs> girl, the other girl got fired. Like, you know, but you are <laughs> just elegant and classy. Um, no, but so I, I didn't, I had a feeling because just the way everything was like all the animatics had already been recorded. Like you had recorded some things and I was just like, huh, this is so weird. And then I asked Noelle finally, like I, a year ago and she was like, yeah, somebody else had had the job. And so it just goes to show two things. A, how wonderful it is to be a part of animation because you get to play characters that look nothing like you. Like if we were auditioning for the live action version of this, like you would absolutely be Adora, not only because of your talent, but also because you look like her. Uh Um, And then I don't know who I'd be. Maybe, maybe a Catra. I don't know. You actually um, could be a Catra. Yeah. But I think it's so interesting that, that, and great that animation allows for different, you know, p- people who to break away from the way they look. And yeah. then I guess the second thing would be, wait, what is the second thing? Oh, how re- how recasting happens? Was that where you were? Oh, heading? yeah. 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 And, and how some things like, if it's meant for you, it's meant for you. It's you know yours. what I mean? Somebody can literally already have the job and then, yeah. and it, look, it happens. I mean, I've, it happens. Hopefully not often, but it, it does happen where people get recast. But I am, so thankful that um I did that that person did it most. I know, um, I know. I don't even remember who it was. But yeah. It's just okay. it's really cool that it that it became us. I mean, and I I, I think it was a no brainer to Noel, you know, when when I was in that room and it was me and, and her reading with each other. I not to like I'm not throwing shade on this. She was very talented, no. but I, I don't think she was fully comfortable with that role. And I I felt, not like I felt like I was fully comfortable playing catcher. I was just figuring it out as I went. But I do feel like people people know when a role is right for you and when it's not. And it was like you came in and it was like a no-brainer. And, you know, you've had to work double time because you're Adora and Shira. But what, this is going to sound silly, but like what is your favorite, like if you had to say like, you know, I'm choosing my Adora moments or my Shira moments, who do you enjoy mm-hmm. playing more? Oh, Adora, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I figure. You know, she's human. I feel like Shira is human too, but 
it's like she's like the she's like the the I don't know I can't I, one time I uh, compared it to like this all like an alter ego like she <laughs> becomes I mean you are you're musical like you are not I mean you're like a professional mu- musician um and I remember like when I was in like musical theater class they would say like once a character like just cannot speak they sing and it's one of these things with, with Adora, I feel like it, once she has like hit her limit of like brute strength and power, mm-hmm. then she becomes this other thing. And it's, it's a time where she doesn't have any um, pro like she's, you know, she doesn't have any like self consciousness. She doesn't have any, like all she's able to leave her problems behind and just task. Right. Um, as Shira, which is cool for her, but like not as interesting to play as a human with like, you know, with real problems. world problems. Yeah. Yeah. Shira is like the hero version of Adora. And at that point she can leave everything else behind. Exactly. Yeah. So she's not really grappling with, or maybe I'm wrong about that, but I remember like just, you know, when we were trying to like figure out what the difference is going to be in my voice and I don't think there ended up being a difference, but, um, I think that's good. Well, yeah, me too. I think she, Noel like thought maybe they'd put a filter on it or something at first, but thankfully that, I don't know if that would have been distracting or anything. Um, I'm so glad they didn't, that it's just, yeah, I think it's better. And then how many times would you say you've said for the honor of Grayskull? So many times that they had a library of them. (laughs) And and it's one of those things, like, I want to ask you this too, if we have the time, um, do you feel like as a voice actor, there's always like maybe as Catra, because I know for the honor of Grace School was that thing for me yeah. where I just like, every time I had to say it, I had like this thing in the pit of my stomach because I, I don't know. It has so much pressure on it. So many people. Yeah. Know it is. And the more you say it, you're like, I don't want it to lose its authenticity, but it can't be a canned phrase. That's the same recording you use in every episode. Yeah. So it's like, so it just, I, do you ever feel like maybe not as Catra, but as other I don't know, even just your characters at your live action. Like, did you ever feel like, oh, this is the thing everybody quotes back at me. And because they do, it's all this pressure that people, you know, I don't know if you had any moments like that. Not in like live action, only in animated, but I would say it's, hey, Adora, you know, the catcher yeah. slogan, which, which really does change in a lot of episodes. Like sometimes yeah. it's kind of sultry. Sometimes it's like defiant. Other times it's like territorial, like it changes yeah. the meaning. So I understand they can't ever use one version of it. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I would say is this cartoon that I that I worked on for for Cartoon Network called Steven Universe. My character would say oh. I'm a fusion when they would when Connie and um, and Steven would fuse together. And so if I like go to a convention, whatever, people are always like, "Will you record yourself saying I'm a fusion?" Oh, <laughs> so that's become yeah. my little slogan. But nothing in a lot in live action world. Clearly, my my yeah. animated career is more interesting to people. No, no. I mean, we're just more like there was this thing I had to say when I was on Young and Hungry, which my character would like say her full name, like Sofia Maria. I forgot it all, but it was like a full name. And like people are constantly either asking saying you. it at me or asking me to say it. Not constantly. Nobody knows who I am, but I'm saying like when I'm in a position where like maybe at a convention or something. Yeah. Or even on Instagram, like it's my birthday. Could you record yourself saying all the names? You're I'm like, like, no, honey, this is not cameo. No. No, you're like, yeah, hello. So it's one of those things that it becomes its own thing after a while. And, and I just, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to hear other, I'm glad that I'm not the only person that's like, oh my God, there's another one of these in the script. Like how many no, I, different, like still fill expectations, whatever. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, now we have really cool slogans that will live on, on Netflix. I know. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm hoping for, I know Kevin Smith at one point was going to do a He-Man reboot. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm really hoping that like he somehow incorporates she and makes it like a, just because of how like powerful the yeah. impact of the she reboot has been that he puts them together and we can come back and relive our characters. Really people want it. You know, what's crazy is I remember Noel or recently Noel was like, it, there's so many people have like, since the finale, I think have new people have found the show because yeah. maybe they've heard about what happened at the end. Um, so they've been watching the show. So I wonder if Netflix is like kicking themselves right now. Like that they gave it an ending. Seasons, you know, I don't know. But. I know. It's kind of crazy because for a lot of people, they feel like it it ended too too quickly. The way they yeah. like drop the episodes. It's like, all right, five seasons aired in like two years. I know. I know. But. That's kind of, it took a much longer than that because animation takes so long. But right. But yeah, I. Uh, people only get I to live with it. For huh? sh- people only get to live with it for a short period of time yeah. before it's their yeah. rewatching. And also, it would be cool to see like what Katra and Adora get on to 
post this revelation? Like, what is their I life know. like? Yeah. Have you seen all these like like fan fiction after the show scenarios? Like, like have I've, you seen stuff of us having a baby? By the way, I've seen <sighs> the the pictures, and I'm like, that's so sweet. I know, um, and it's like a baby that looks half cat, but has like an Adora hairdo. <laughs> A hundred has the poof. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So funny. I I think that's so great. Like I've been a fan of shows. I'm sure you have too, where you kind of wish like we finally got what we want as an audience. I wish that we could get you know like a the aftermath into life once we we do. But I understand why shows do it because you they want to keep people. You know, yeah, um, wanting more and and people have to at some point tie up a story. Like there are so many shows yeah. that just went on too long. You know, too it's like. Long. Dexter, Breaking Bad, God bless them, but like, yes, could have ended sooner. Could have ended sooner. Should have. Should have. Should have. Um, but in, in this case, I I would be so thrilled to get back in the booth with you, same. It, playing Adora or something else. So maybe somebody will. Same. Hire us. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hire us. I'm gonna campaign for a Netflix movie for like a Shira movie. Yes, I will be the first to sign that petition. petition. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. It'll yeah. start. It'll start with this live stream. Thank Great. you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thanks, of Allie, course. for reading the stage directions. Oh, way, yeah, yeah. way below her pay grade. You're welcome. You. And literally below. Her I'm pay literally grade. below. I'm on the ground. I just wanted you guys to have your little moment together. <laughs> Thank you so so much. Of course, we you. adore you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Love Bye. you, Amy. Bye, baby. Love you.